Okay. It's done? Yes, off you go. Thank you. I'm going to look All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So thanks for inviting me to talk about inconclusive AVS. Um, you see, I'm one of the consultant endocrinologists in the northeast of England. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is AVS itself, adrenal vein sampling, which is used in um in the workup for primary aldosteronism. Um, it's quite a complex procedure and the way you work out the indices, it is also quite complex. You cannot look at a set of results and then decide, oh, it's the left or the right or bilateral adrenal that's producing excess aldosterone. So the radiologist will get blood, or should get blood from the left adrenal vein um, and from the right adrenal vein. The right one can sometimes be tricky to cannulate. Um, and there is um, a chance of failure. And you also have to get blood from either the inferior vena cava, the IVC, or peripherally uh, for comparison. So the first thing you would look at is the cortisol level. Um, a lot of centers would do these um, at AVS under um, a synaxin stimulation. Um, and when you look at your cortisol levels, uh, you compare the periphery to the left and the right, and that will tell you whether the radiologist was successful at cannulating those adrenal veins. You should get a selectivity index of more than five, um, and that is working out that the cortisol in the adrenal vein com um, compared to the periphery um, should, uh, should be more than five if you're using synaxin um, stimulation. So once you've got these, once you've got that, then you look at your aldosterone, um, aldosterone levels, um, and um, you again will have the aldosterone levels from the left and the right and the periphery, and you have to work out an aldosterone to cortisol ratio. That adjustment is quite important um, because when the radiologists go inside of those veins, um, it, uh, depending how far they are from the adrenal, uh, the source of the aldosterone excess, you will get a variable results. Uh, so you have to make that adjustment, which adjusts for that distance from the source. Um, and then you can work out, um, once you've got the aldosterone to cortisol ratio, whether it's one side that you think is producing excess or both sides. Um, and if it is one-sided um, aldosterone excess, you should really get what we call a lateralization index of more than four. So if you take the aldosterone to cortisol in the dominant side and you divide it by the other adrenal um, side, you should get um, a ratio of more than four. Um, and you also can look at something called contralateral suppression. So if you've got one side producing excess, then you expect the other adrenal to be fully suppressed. And if you work out the same ratios of aldosterone to cortisol between the two, those two adrenals, you should get a level of either less than one or less than 0 0.5. The, the, the literature varies in, in, in terms of the, these indices and there's data to support both. Um, and there's also a third in this, uh, index called the dominance index. Um, and that is looking at the aldosterone to cortisol level in what you think might be the source, the, 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 the unilateral source of uh, aldosterone excess, and you divide it by the inferior vena cava, the aldosterone to cortisol ratio in the inferior vena cava. And if that level is more than 5.5, these data suggest that it is unilateral, um, um, uh, uh, unilateral aldosterone excess. Um, now, all these numbers um, come with their, um, nothing is 100%, um, so every, uh, all these indices have got a, a specificity and sensitivity attached to it. But adrenal vein sampling remains the gold standard for, um, uh, for subtyping um, primary aldosteronism before offering um, uh, surgery. And it's really to ensure that it's only one side that's uh, producing excess as opposed to bilateral disease. And that is the thought. So this study, Spartaca study, looked at uh, how does aldo um, um, surgery um, um, for high, uh, primary aldosteronism aldosteronism compares if you use an AVS-based approach as opposed to using a CT-based approach. So if you look at the CT side first, the 92 uh, patients were offered surgery based on the CT. So they had primary aldosteronism, had a CT, and those who had a unilateral, uh, unilateral uh, lesion were offered surgery. And you can see that 80% achieved biochemical remission. The other 20% did not achieve biochemical remission. Um, and the reason for that is because the other 20% either had bilateral disease or a, a smaller proportion would have had a, a unilateral aldosterone excess that's not coming from the side that, that has the lesion, it's coming from the side that looks normal. So in that small proportion, they were offered the, the wrong surgery, you would, you would say. Then there is the side that had AVS. And again, around half of those, when they look at the AVS indices, they decided to take one adrenal out and their biochemical remission rate is 89%. Um, for those who were offered surgery based on CT, you can appreciate that only half of them had a, a, a lesion to remove. The other half either had um, 
no lesions on, a, uh, on either adrenal gland or had bilateral uh, lesions. So one of the problem with a CT-based approach is that um, you can only decide which one to offer, which uh, gland to remove if they have one lesion on one side. So then, so if you've got, if you do AVS and you get the bilateral cannulation, then you can use those um, indices that we've talked about to make a, a scientific decision which adrenal to take out if it's unilateral excess. But what if you can only access one adrenal vein um, and the radiologist hasn't cannulated the other one? What would um, then people do with those results? Um, so the options would be, would you offer unilateral adrenalectomy if there's only one lesion on the OCT? Would you repeat the adrenal vein sampling? Um, would you commit to long-term medical therapy or would you go and do uh, functional imaging? And um, the, the one that is um, now being used is Metomidate uh, PET-CT, but that is quite difficult to access by IMO centers, at least in the UK. So if people can vote on that um, and then we'll look at the results on the Menti. So most people, 50% would go for functional imaging and around a third would repeat the AVS. The problem with repeating the AVS is if it's being done by the same radiologist, the chances are that they will still not be able to access that adrenal vein. Um, you might want to change radiologists uh, or um, sometimes they use um, other ways of getting in with the CT-based approach. So AVS, if you're successful, great, you get the indices, you can decide which adrenal to remove. But if it's not conclusive, so it's inconclusive, only one side has been cannulated, there are two approaches um, in practice. There are, there's a purist approach where people would repeat the AVS or commit to medical therapy or do functional imaging. But sometimes you will, I wonder whether the purist may ask the pragmatist what to do because um, I'm a pragmatist and uh, some of my colleagues here in the Northeast are. And we offer unilateral adrenalectomy um, based on an MDT discussion, um, looking at the images and looking at what results we have from that inconclusive AVS. So one thing to, to just reiterate is that if you look at those who have a unilateral lesion on CT and you offer them AVS just based on that unilateral lesion, around 4% of them would be offered the wrong surgery because it's the adrenal that looks normal that is actually producing excess aldosterone. So you, whatever you do with inconclusive AVS, you don't want to offer these patients this um, a surgery um, because you would be offering them the wrong surgery. However, if, if you offer surgery in, 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 with inconclusive AVS, you will take a risk of offering a, a one side unilateral surgery when these patients have bilateral um, aldosterone excess. Now, the emerging data seems to, the, the trend is supporting that, okay, well, if you've done that, you might actually have some benefit in terms of blood pressure control or reducing number of antihypertensive therapy or at least controlling hypokalemia. So the emerging data is quite promising in that, in that regard. So in the Northeast, we, 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 we don't consider uh, taking one adrenal out when there's bilateral surgery as a failure. Um, so what, what do we do here? So this is what we tend to do, what, what we've learned over the years and, and, and we've refined. So you look at the results of the aldosterone to cortisol ratio in the cannulated vein, uh, and you divide that by the periphery. If that ratio is less than one, and some authorities might use less than 0 0.5 to say that it's suppressed, then what it's telling you is that side is suppressed. You don't remove that adrenal on that side, that ipsilateral. You remove the contralateral adrenal, irrespective of what the imaging shows. However, if you've looked at your cannulated side and the ratio is more than one, what it's telling you, that side is producing um, a lot of aldosterone. Then you look at, but you don't know what's happening on the, on the other side because you don't have, it hasn't been cannulated. So and then you look at your CT. If the lesion is on the same side, the ipsilateral uh, side, um, then it's a unilateral lesion, then we would offer surgery. By doing that, we would more than 80% of them will have unilateral secretion, but there will be a proportion of them who will have bilateral secretion and we're offering them surgery um, with bilateral secretion. But as I said, is we, because the emerging data is, is promising, um, we don't consider this as a failure. However, if you have got a CT that shows that there's no adrenal lesions or there's bilateral adrenal lesions, and you've cannulated only one side that's, that's, that's giving you this uh, index of more than one, then what we've discovered in our practice that if you look at the other side that wasn't cannulated, the radiologist would have taken some blood tests somewhere around the periphery of that uncannulated vein, thinking they were in, 
If you look at those indices and work it out the same way, aldosterone to cortisol and that uncanalated side, um, and you divide it by the periphery, if you get what looks like a suppression index of less than one, what we've learned is that suggests to us that that side is likely to be suppressed um, and we would offer surgery to the contralateral side. So how, how does that all do in practice? So this is what we, we, we published earlier this year, um, looking at um, how we, we've done our inconclusive AVS and what is the long-term um, surgical outcomes. So we had 29 patients who had inconclusive AVS, but that, I mean, only one side was cannulated. Um, um, 16 of them were offered adrenalectomy, unilateral adrenalectomy, and our biochemical remission is 94%. That is comparable to um, the core of any cohort uh, of patients receiving a um, unilateral surgery based on bilateral um, uh, AV, successful AVS. So we're doing quite well. And uh, the clinical Q is 50%. In the literature, you expect a clinical Q of 30% uh, with patients who are offered unilateral surgery based on successful AVS. Um, this is the list of those patients who had um, uh, inconclusive AVS. What you would notice a number on the left-hand side, the red box, a number of those patients had either no lesions on their CT or bilateral lesions. So if we didn't just go and take the lesion that we, we could see on the CT, the AVS, the inconclusive AVS added value here to tell us which one to remove. Um, and interestingly, um, sometimes the lesion is on the left, but you have to take the right out because you have this suppressed ratio. So the one side um, uh, cannulated uh, vein did give us quite uh, useful information. The other thing about this um, table is that if you look at group B, I talked about you can look at the aldosterone to cortisol ratio in the uncannulated side. So basically blood around that vein that hasn't been cannulated. If, and you can see that all, all of them, when we worked out, they've got this, what looks like a suppressed index here. Um, and 11 out of, uh, sorry, 10 out of 11 of those patients, and when we remove the contralateral gland, um, we achieve biochemical remission. The one patient who didn't achieve biochemi biochemical remission had um, bilateral disease. So if you ever, you ever want to follow this algorithm, if you've got inconclusive AVS, this is what we've done here. And uh, we've proved, uh, well, so far we've proven that it works for us and is comparable to having bilateral um, um, successful AVS uh, to, to guide which um, adrenal to remove. And that's the paper that's uh, been published earlier this year. So the next talk is about um, bilateral adrenal lesions and autonomous cortisol secretion. And, and uh, uh, the, the background to this is if you've got someone who's got um, an adrenal um, swelling, an adrenal adenoma, you work them biochemically and you find that they've got uh, autonomous cortisol secretion. So they've got a low or suppressed ACTH and they failed their overnight back suppression test. They've got what we might be classed as, as max and um, mild autonomous cortisol secretion, or some of them might have frank Cushing's. And um, if you've got that biochemical picture with suppressed ACTH um, and you've got one lesion on your adrenal, um, it's very easy. You just take that um, adrenal gland out. Um, you, there's no further test to do. However, what do you do if actually both adrenal glands look abnormal and there are lesions in both glands? Um, so this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, I've got a few cases to illustrate what we've done and whether it's worked or not, uh, because there's no clear algorithm what to do in those cases, whether you remove the gland that's bigger, whether you offer some form of further uh, test to look at which side is producing more than the other. Um, so my first case is a 35-year-old um, male who is... Uh, and our care with carney is complex. His mummy's brother also has um, the genetic condition. Um, he's, all, he's got acromegaly, a number of those patients will have a uh, pituitary disease, uh, and uh, they will also get surveillance for ACDH independent hypercortisolemia, which is associated with carnies. So this patient has had elevated um, urine cortisol so for a number of years, but he's never wanted anything doing about it. He felt well, and um, why should we do anything? He's quite averse to any um, intervention, especially surgical intervention. Um, when he were in the peripheral hospitals, have been doing some scans on him, and you can appreciate that, that there was no lesion detected on his adrenals in 2016 and 2020. Um, and, and that is normal in, the, in, 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 in this uh, cohort of patient. However, when I saw him in 2022 in clinic, he, things have changed. He now looked Cushingoid uh, and we worked him up biochemically again and he got um, a raised 24-hour urine cortisol, a suppressed ACTH, and he failed his overnight dex suppression test uh, with a cortisol of 423. 
He was hypertensive in clinic. He had uh, evidence of prediabetes and he had uh, left ventricular hypertrophy on his echocardiogram and osteopenia on his uh, bone density scan. So clearly this, this patient now is, is having, um, uh, the, the, is, is he's got Cushing's um, and, um, and it's starting to affect his, uh, his organs. But we repeated his CT just because the, the, the last CT was a couple of years ago. And uh, the new finding is that now he's got a one centimeter left adrenal adenoma that wasn't there before. Now, what would people do? Now, before you I ask you what you do, so the, the general consensus is in, in Carney's complex, the disease is, um, is bilateral. You either take both adrenals out, uh, or there's also a thought that okay, if you've got an abnormality on one side, you can take that one out, and then you might buy the patient a few years by having one adrenal uh, left in place to prevent um, uh, adrenal insufficiency but you would expect them to need a, a completion bilateral adrenectomy after some time, um, and they will be rendered hypoadrenal. So would people offer bilateral adrenectomies or take only the left side out because that's the side that's got the lesion? Would they offer adrenal vein sampling to compare cortisol from the adrenal gland? So this is the same procedure, but we're not looking at aldosterone here. We're looking at cortisol. And uh, well, if you were to do that, you would not give them synactin test, uh, synactin stimulation. Um, would you initiate medical therapy to control the cortisol excess, or would you just uh, look at the comorbidities and uh, treat them and optimize the interventions uh, to treat uh, to prevent diabetes and treat hypertension? So if people can vote on the menti, so what do we have? Around half of you would say offer adrenal vein sampling, uh, and the rest it's, it's divided between the options. Uh, the problem with adrenal vein sampling in this context is that uh, there is no established way of how to how to interpret it. Uh, let alone what marker to use um, for to, to ascertain um, cannulation of both adrenal veins. So we did do adrenal vein sampling on this patient. Uh, the reason for that is because he wanted it, um, and he, he and the, the family were quite uh, adamant that he should get adrenal vein sampling. Um, and there's a bit of a background to this, but. Um, so he did get adrenal vein sampling, and here we use the monometanephrine um, to look at whether the adrenal veins have been cannulated. And you can appreciate that the radiologist did cannulate both right and left adrenal vein, because if we use a cannulation index of more than five, of five it, it, it's been achieved in both cases. Then um, we also, you can also use aldosterone as your marker for cannulation, but you can see that in this particular patient, um, it wouldn't have worked. Um, so if you look at the cortisol level, which is what you're interested in, um, the crude cortisol level um, doesn't tell you much. But it does say that the right side looks a bit more, but uh, the left side also producing um, an, a cortisol level that's quite high uh, compared to the periphery. But so you can work out a cortisol to norbitanephrine ratio to adjust for any variation to uh, where, where the catheter was placed in the adrenal veins. Um, and now you get a bit of a cleaner picture here that, that you can see that the right adrenal vein has got an index that's higher than the periphery and higher than the left. But importantly, the left side seems to be suppressed if you compare the, um, the cortisol to normal ratio in the left adrenal vein to the periphery. And that, now that, that's a similar workup that you would do for, um, for aldosterone excess. Now, mind you that the side that looks suppressed on that AVS um, has the adenoma. Now, what would people do in that scenario now? So again, before you decide, we, we offer you the options. We went to the experts about this because I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert in carnies. And the expert said, you ignore the AVS result. You just take both adrenals out, or if you want to offer one, just take the one with the lesion out. So would people offer bilateral adrenectomy, as the, the expert would, um, would say? Would you offer the, offer the left side, where, which contain, contain the adenoma? Again, the expert would agree with that if the patient wants that. Uh, would you take the right side out? Because that seems to be the unsuppressed side on the AVS, um, on the adrenal vein sampling. Uh, would you initiate medical therapy uh, to control cortisol excess? Or would you, again, just manage comorbidities and optimize things to prevent diabetes? So if people can vote again, and let's see. So um, a third of you said you would offer bilateral adenectomy as uh, ad advised by the experts. Um, and around 20% would say are the left side take out, which contain the adenoma or take the right side out. So we asked the patient what they would want um, and the patient asked uh, me, what would you do? And um, 
my feeling was, well, let's let's go by the AVF because there's nothing to lose here. Um, if we've got it wrong, then it's bilateral adenectomy, just complete it. Um, so we took the right out, the one that didn't was not suppressed on the AVF because the left side it looked suppressed to me. But he was aware that it, it may well be that the left side is still autonomous and he would need a completion. This is the histology report, um, uh, and it shows uh, features of primary pigmented nodular adenocortical disease, which is what you would find in Carney's complex. And we did his, so after surgery, he, would, he, would, he went into replacement dose of, uh, of steroid, which we use prednisolone here. And we did, we did his synaptin test four weeks later on, on three milligram of prednisolone. Um, and his uh, peak cortisol is 274 nanomol per liter. He's failed his synaptin test. Now, um, what um, what we don't know is um, what was going to happen in the future. Well, I hope he would. Uh, he's going to come off his uh, steroid, and he will be you adrenal. Whether how many how many months or years he will get before that adrenal become uh, become active again and start uh, becoming autonomous, I don't know. But it seems that the AVS has helped us at least in this um, at this stage um, at taking the correct adrenal out, uh, with the hope that we can keep keep him. Um, not being hypoadrenal um, so early uh, in his life. So the second case is a 65 Bangladeshi um, man who came under our care because he was found to have an incidental rachdase cleft cyst. Um, and that's his past medical history. He had metabolic syndrome, but he wasn't obese. He had his BMI was 18. He had type 2 diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, quite severe peripheral vascular disease and has had previous stroke and associated subarachnoid hemorrhage. Or these were the medications he, were on, he was on, uh, metformin, amlodipine, and an ACE inhibitor, among others. The interesting thing about this gentleman was that he had intermittent hypokalemia in the past, and that was a bit strange because with ACE inhibitor, you know, expected to get hypokalemia. So we really wanted to look into a bit more here because uh, that, that there's something not adding up here. Um, he has had peripheral, uh, peripheral vascular disease, so had a CT angiogram in the past. And we looked at his uh, CT angio for claudication in 2015. You can appreciate that both adrenals are not normal. They are quite chunky, um, but that wasn't reported at the time on the CT. So he was investigated biochemically, and he's got a suppressed ACTH. He failed his uh, low-dose dexopression test uh, with cortisol was over 50 and had a raised 24-hour urine free cortisol. Um, and his aldosterone was fully suppressed. He had evidence of osteopenia on his uh, bone density scan. Interestingly, this gentleman did not look pushing God at all. So what would people do at this point? Would they offer conservative management? Would they offer bilateral adrenectomy because there's bilateral uh, abnormality on the, on the CT? Would they offer adrenal vein sampling to look at cortisol levels from both adrenal veins? Uh, uh, and let's see. So people voted more than 50% would offer AVS um, and 16% would uh, do conservative management. I have to say there's no right or wrong answer in these cases because there's no established way of, of how to investigate and, and treat these patients. So the important thing about bilateral adrenal um, lesions in the context of um, ACTH independent hypercortisolemia, um, some of these patients might harbor genetic mutations that predispose to this, to, to, to this condition. So in the NHS, you can often R160 gene panel testing um, and ARNC5 um, mutation has been associated with macronodular hyperplasia. So it, it's a good idea to offer this because if they have got this mutation, um, then the, at the moment, the literature seems to suggest either medical therapy or bilateral adrenectomy. So this patient's genetic testing was negative. Um, so we uh, asked him, um, well, we discussed in the MDT, what should we offer? Um, and, and it was quite open to say, well, if the patient wants something doing surgically, then offer adrenal vein sampling. So he went for AVS. Um, so again, we've used normatonephrine as a marker for cannulation and he had bilateral cannulation. Um, and if uh, we look at his cortisol level and do a cortisol to normatonephrine ratio, you can appreciate that the left adrenal vein, uh, the, the, the ratio is, is higher than the right. Uh, and if you look at the right compared to the periphery, you have a clear suppression index on the right side. Again, there's, um, the way we've, we've worked these indices uh, hasn't been well um, investigated in the literature, um, but this is what we have. So uh, you can also sometimes work a lateralization index. Um, what would people do now with the, the those um, 
results, would you offer conservative management? Would you offer bilateral adrenectomy? Would you offer left-sided adrenectomy? Um, so if people can vote and, uh, or they can offer a right-sided adrenectomy. So most people said they would offer a left-sided adrenectomy because the right side is suppressed on the AVS. So is it the correct thing to do? So we did offer the left side uh, adrenectomy and the, the histology is, uh, is consistent with adrenocortical nodular disease. Um, and we did his cortisol the next day. So he was given dexamethasone and induction um, for his surgery. And his cortisol the next day was 24 nanomol per liter, which looked promising. Uh, he started on replacement dose. Well, he was started on a bit of a higher dose of prednisolone and we, we start cutting down um, weekly. And currently he's on five milligram of prednisolone, which is super physiological, but his 9 a.m. cortisol just before taking the prednisolone was 71 and his 24 hour urine cortisol is, is 29. That is significantly lower than his um, previous one at 226. So it seems that we've offered him the correct surgery, whether the left, uh, the adrenal, the right adrenal left in place is suppressed or not, we'll find out when um, we test him with a synactin test uh, later um, in the year. So my last case is a 58-year-old female. Uh, he, she's not my patient. She's a patient of my colleague, Dr. Napier. So I have to acknowledge her and thank her for allowing me to present this lady. She, present, she has a bit bosmical history of hypertension and primary hypothyroidism. And this is the list of medications that she's taking. She came to our attention when she was found to have bilateral adrenal incidentalomas when she was investigated for a chronic cough. However, when she was seen in clinic, um, um, we found that she has rapidly developed central adiposity over three, six months, and she was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Her blood pressure was elevated, her BMI was 24, and it was getting difficult to control her blood pressure with medications. Um, on clinical examination, um, the uh, consultant noted that she had Cushingoid features. So her CT shows bilateral adrenal, aden uh, adrenal adenomas. The right side was bigger than the left. Her urine free cortisol, 24 hour urine free cortisol was elevated, and she failed her overnight dex suppression test, and cortisol was 611. ACTH was suppressed, plasma metanephrine was normal, and allosterone and renin was satisfactory. And this is the, adrenal, um, the adrenals on the CT. You can appreciate that the right is bigger than the left. So, what would people do in this context? Would you offer a left sided adrenectomy? Would you offer a right sided adrenectomy? Would you offer bilateral adrenectomy or would you offer adrenal vein sampling? Again, looking at um, cortisol levels. So if people can vote, uh, oh, there's an option of um, initiating medical therapy also to um, control a cortisol excess or managing comorbidities. So majority of you would offer adrenal vein sampling. So I seem to have convinced you that adrenal vein sampling work in these cases um, based on case reports. Um, so let's see, this lady did get uh, adrenal vein sampling. Um, now, there is an interesting part. The left adrenal uh, vein was cannulated, but the right wasn't this, in, uh, this time. So um, we've got only left-sided cannulation. So we can still work out what does a cortisol to norm metanephrine ratios look like. And uh, you can appreciate that the left side looks to be quite suppressed compared to the periphery. And she has got on that side that suppressed a one centimeter adrenal adenoma. And the right side, which was not cannulated, has got a larger lesion, the 2.7 centimeter. So what would people do in this case? Would they offer a left-sided adrenectomy, the side that looks that suppressed on the um, AVS, but uh, there's a one centimeter lesion there, would they offer a right-sided adrenectomy? That's the bigger lesion. And I have to say that the current practice would be to offer um, a, a unilateral adrenectomy um, based on CT, uh, removing the bigger lesion. Or would you just take both adrenals out? Would you just control um, the cortical excess with medical therapy or just manage comorbidities? So majority of people would um, offer a right-sided adrenectomy, taking the bigger lesion out. Um, and this is what we did for two reasons. One is because that's common practice, but also because the AVS does support that. Um, and the histology is an adrenocortical adenoma. And this, uh, this lady was sent home with a replacement dose of steroid and her synactin test two months later uh, tells you that 
the adrenal leptin place, the left one, which contains the one, one centimeter adenoma, is actually fully suppressed, and she still has an actin test. So the the AVS did um, help us take the correct adrenal out, and the, the cortisol excess was only coming from one side. So adrenal vein sampling uh, may have a role in surgical decision making in patients with bilateral adrenal abnormalities um, uh, in ACTH independent hypercortisolemia. Um, I hope these uh, three cases have helped in uh, in advancing your understanding of this condition and uh, um, and maybe uh, you might something you might consider in the future. Thank you.